Okay, cliffhanger in the last one. We got this error, and if we click on it, it's saying, do you want to put in here using Microsoft Entity Framework Core? Now, what we installed was SQLite, but I guess that's informing Microsoft Entity Framework Core. I would have expected to say, use, you know, do you want to import use SQLite? But, but there's a connection there somehow, obviously. All right, so we've got that installed. So it's recognizing SQLite now, and we've got our connection string set up. So we're all ready to go to run migrations, kind of. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So again, we can do that easily going into the terminal. So open in terminal, and we are in our folder here that we can see. And do you remember the command? So we say .NET EF migrations add initial. And so we can go put in, and again, this is the name we're giving it, so whatever we want to there. First one. Okay, so we can name it just whatever we want to. A lot of times we'll do initial, but .NET EF migrations add first one. So I run this. And if I've done things wrong, which I hope I have, then I should get an error here. Okay, so .NET uh, build failed. You use .NET build to see the errors. And so that's telling me there's a error in the code, which I wouldn't think that's the case. Um, no extensible method for use SQLite. So this comes back to, it's this package thing. We need to close out of Visual Studio. Let's save all. Whenever we install packages, there's a potential for problems as we've written code for it to not be recognized. So I'm gonna come back in here. And then we'll run another When we get loaded up, go back to the PowerShell and run another .NET build, which I think it'll run just fine. Yeah, the build's fine. So that just had to do with the packages. But now let's go back to the command we were running before. So .NET EF migrations add first one. And let's see if we can get the error that I'm expecting. All right, so this says, your startup project API fund doesn't reference Microsoft Entity Framework Core design. We never imported the design package, and that's why we're getting this error. So the design helps us run the, the migrations. Now we can obviously go in and, and use the NuGet package manager, but I wanted to show here as well. You can just install the package right here at the command line. So you can say .NET add package, if you know the name of it, and say Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore dot design and it will go grab the latest version unless you specify otherwise so I click on that it goes in adds the package and now let's try running our command again so a lot of people prefer to run those at the at the command line so dot net dot net ef migrations add first one all right so we'll cross our fingers here um, oh yes of course it says unable to create the context file because there's no primary key defined, and we did forget totally to do that. So in the Marriott food, I want to say, the Marriott food class, I want to identify that the, the food ID is going to be the key. Now it's not going to recognize that at first, so I hover over it, and it says, hey, do you want to import data annotations? And why, well, yes, I do. I click on that, it brings it in, save that. Okay, so now that we've identified the key, <laughs> Hopefully, when we run this now, .NET EF migrations add the first one. Run that. And there we go. Okay, so now we've run the migrations and we can see this migrations folder pop up. We can go in and look at the migration and make sure everything looks like we want it to look. It's gonna build this column as an integer. This one is text, text, integer. Um, the primary key is going to be the food ID. It's going to create a table name foods. Um, so everything looks good. Then I can run my .NET EF database update, which will go look at the migration file, go see how it compares to the database and make any changes. In this case, the database doesn't exist. So it's going to run this whole file, uh, this whole file's worth of stuff. So I run that. And sure enough, my, my Marriott food database pops up. 
Um, I, I must not have, let's see if I have, uh, what's it called installed in here? Uh, DB browser for SQLite. I do not. Okay, so this will be something that you don't have to worry about because you should have it installed. This is just a new account that I, well, no, I do have it installed. Let me go add it. I'm sure I have it installed because it's on the, on the desktop. So yeah, DB browser for SQLite. I go out and add that as one of my options. And then I click on it and say set as default. And that way when I double click on it, it'll come up right in there. So now I've got a foods table with each of those items sitting out there in it. And my database is set up and ready to go for us to use in our API. All right, we'll continue on with the controller in the next video. Spencer out.